Hello everyone! Hello, hello! And Sprite, I just saw you say that you woke up from a nap and I did too! I fell asleep on my bed wrapped up in my Ubuntu blanket that I got this week from the wonderful Sharon and uh, I was sitting in the sun and I was like, okay, I'm gonna come up with some ideas for what to do for niche today. And the next thing I know I had slept for an hour and I woke up to somebody raiding the cookie jar that I hide in my office. So now that he has gotten his cookies uh, and is back to work on his stuff, hello everyone, hi guys. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> All right, let's make sure you guys can see me. Uh, let's make sure. Oh my gosh, Paige, you're going to crack me up. Queen, queen, queen. Did you guys see all of the cool new niche fan art I've been sharing with you in the community tab? Let me pull up the niche fan art right now, actually. Uh, gosh, I wonder, do you guys think that our lonely prince is going to actually find his queen this time? Because that would be delightful. <laughs> That would be absolutely delightful. Uh, all right, let me go ahead. Hey, yes, somebody, Callium. Professor Callium is in the house. Radaru, thank you so much for letting me know, by the way, that my voice is balanced well with the music. It's always a ever-evolving process of yanking various knobs in software systems around until it finds balance. Uh, let me go ahead and in the background, I am going to slip us into the Fruitlings file. We are up to 12 hours and four minutes of this adventure so far, my friends. I'm going to be pulling it up just so we can look at them in the... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I love when they do the little pause for the loading screen. Uh, let's see. There we go. You guys can kind of see the little pause for a second. Dun, dun. Oh, here we are! Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Oh my goodness gracious. And we've got two royal snoots to pair. Are we going to get you your royal snoot today or not? Oh, and we left a baby being attacked by the, the, the corruption. But all right, as usual, I want to give it just a few minutes of chit and chat and looking at the new fan art. We've gotten so much beautiful fan art sent to my fan mail email at mail for Siri. Uh, at gmail.com. Gosh, that was almost like a really weird rhyme. And I know that the, oh, it's the poem. Oh my gosh, you guys, did you see the poem I posted in the community tab? If you haven't seen the poem I posted in the community tab, definitely check it out. Also, YouTube is telling me that it's having a hard time getting the stream going. So we're gonna hold still for a minute and let it see if it's going to receive all of the data that it needs first. Um, the servers, the YouTube servers are having some issues with the live stream stuff today, I noticed. It took me a couple times to get connected. So if I suddenly disappear, I think that there is a YouTube side issue and we'll just have to pick up next time. Uh, but all right, to pair, are you gonna find love today? We're gonna have to find out. But as there's also sometimes some issues with YouTube sending out notifications, let's hang out for the next five minutes as we let the first 10 minutes of our stream settle in as per tradition. It will also give me time to sip this green tea and wake up. <laughs> Queen, oh my gosh, I love how, how you guys are just so adorably hilarious like that. And hey, Space Dorito, thank you so much for being here. And just a quick reminder, you guys, uh, do please check out the video description for all of the stream rules. No where is questions, no notice me uh, sh or shout out request. Be kind to each other, be nice, <laughs> eat all your vegetables. I haven't added that one in there yet, but I probably should. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm so excited that you guys are like, queen, queen, hopefully we'll find his little queen. Oh, and Sprite, I hope you're waking up too. Thank you, mystical girl, mystical. I am going to sip this green tea. Uh, hey, depressed couch, good to see you again. Ah. Alex, Rebecca, Jay, Girl Scout Brownies, Pixie Wolf, Adrena Usual, Danielle, This Is Me Tempting Fate, 
Jane Griffin who just gave me a ton of emojis. If sometimes your emojis don't show up, YouTube thinks for some terrible reason that emojis are spam. So if you ever send me a ton of emojis, try fewer emojis at a time because sometimes YouTube's like, that's spam. And I'm like, no, it's not, it's art. But apparently not everybody appreciates emoji art like I do. Oh, thank you, Lava Bunny Girl. I'm doing very well. Uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying the adventures we've had this week. The patrons and I got up to some really awesome adventures that I actually need to share with you guys. Um, for, uh, for zoo crafting, we got another one of the special forest, like for January's trees for the patrons, we made that cloud kingdom that we're gonna do stuff with. And for February, we made a candy forest with cookie bushes. And I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like later. But we had a great time with that last night. And I'm waking up, uh, you've been ta -ta would We're working on a special project with ta, -ta as well, uh, which is largely in part to Professor Callium and Abby uh, really helping out, so it's gonna be really good. Oh, I know, right, Redaru? I love veggies. I My favorite meal right now, since apparently I do need to add eat your veggies to my stream rolls, <laughs> is uh, my favorite meal is a miso udon uh, roasted vegetable salad and it's so delicious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gotta love my broccoli. Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> yes, I present art. Oh, minor faith. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, oh, see, I love the emojis. And again, if you ever like try to share emoji art and it doesn't go through, use fewer emojis. Um, and, and YouTube will be like, well, I guess that's okay. <sighs> Some people. Oh yeah, Space Dorito points out. Also, sometimes when you, if you guys say queen, uh, YouTube thinks it's spam. It's not. It's just the cries of one lonely royal snooted nicheling seeking out his mate. Ah, tea. All right. All right. So we've got like one more minute. I'm just going to be stretching a little bit. Um, all I eat when I'm sick is broccoli. Oh, you know, I actually had a terribly hard time eating broccoli and other vegetables until I've started to saute them, which sounds really grown up. I feel so grown up. I like talking about sauteing my vegetables. Oh, give me a second. I have to preen my hair a little bit. <sighs> I'm all grown up now because I know how to cook my veggies <laughs> and how to eat them. <laughs> But, uh, like, I used to eat veggies the way that they were served to me, like, by my parents or in school, where they just sort of take the canned vegetables and plop it in front of you. They don't even warm it up, and you're like, bah. But now, like, I cut up fresh carrots, fresh broccoli, um, and, like, saute it with a tiny bit of olive oil and salt, and then I eat it because it's delicious. <laughs> so, yeah, I could go on and on and on about that for quite a while, but all right. I know, saute, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> but all right, let me go, <laughs> let me go ahead and have a last sip of my tea. I already have apparently gone through the entire thing, so we'll have to make more tea soon. Just so you know, YouTube is still telling me that it's having a hard time with this stream. I think the YouTube, are, YouTube servers for streaming are just hiccuping to pieces tonight. Uh, oh, and thank you, Callum. I'll show off that pick in just a bit. Um, there we go. Uh, but the YouTube servers are hiccuping tonight, it seems. So if we have some lag or things like that, you can let me know. But I think it's outside of my capabilities because everything on my side is fine. Uh, I think it's just server side. But just to warn you guys, I want fruit. Give me fruit. Oh, I love, I love fruit. Okay, now that I have been revived, I'm starting to actually wake up. I can slip my kombucha over. Patrons, I'm telling you guys, you gotta, you guys gotta respect the mother Scooby because I freaking love my, my, my kombucha. I love my patrons too. I almost said I love my patrons, but I do love my kombucha. Uh, and if any of you guys know what kombucha is, I guess I'm old now because when I used to work at a natural health food store, kombucha was the weirdest, nastiest, like fermented whatnot thing fermented tea basically and now i like chug one or two of them a day 
<laughs> so, now that we have discerned that I'm all grown up because I drink kombucha and I eat my veggies, why don't we review what was happening last stream, my friends? Queen! Salary is water. Oh, Cheryl, I know you were trying to say celery is water, but I kind of like the idea of salaries being water, too. That's adorable somehow. Um, all right. Oh, green beans! Yes! Redaru, how did I forget green beans? <gasps> you guys are about to see me saute a lot of veggies in my vlogs, and uh, I, am getting, I am getting vlogs up and going again. All right, well, let's back up for a second. Hello everyone and welcome to the Fruit Bats Legacy here in Niche. What do you guys remember from last time? I just want to pluck one or two um one or two comments from you guys over what you really remember from last time. I think that one of those comments is no doubt just going to be Queen. Yeah, Calium fermented tea. Mm. Oh, hey, Vivian, eggs? No, I haven't tried Ujakcha uh, yet, Space Dorito, but I totally, I totally am gonna look into that. There's fruits everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, apparently a ton of you guys remember Queen. I think that that's just going to be like the thing we are gonna, we're gonna start with for sure. Uh, definitely for sure. But yeah, Radita used fly! Yes, Professor Kellyam, Radita used fly. That was a big deal. Um, that was definitely a big deal. And then we also have, uh, there we go. And then we also have the, oh, the epic poison fang baby! Yes! Thank you very much, Harry. We do have the epic poison fang baby. Let me go ahead and have another sip of the kombucha. Sorry, guys, I'm waking up, so I need all the stuff that's, like, tea-related. This is not even peach tea. I'm going for the green. I know, strawberry. I'm gonna be so hyper in, like, ten minutes here. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, it, kombucha tastes like fermented elf sweat. Yeah, Redaru, if you drink the wrong kind, I think it definitely could. I, I only like to drink the kind that are like apple juice based. Um, but anyway, let's not talk about fermented elf sweat. That is definitely something you could expect to hear about in my streams. And let's do a quick review of how our wonderful fruit bats are doing and take a, a little gander at our stream goals of the day. So. Today's stream goals, my wonderful friends, is to continue to RP it up in the jungle, because if you guys are not here for the roleplay, I have no idea why you are here. We are going to continue to have Radita, our wonderful toxic bodied double winged only flying nicheling on the island, use fly so that he can fly around the island avoiding the threat of death from the other nichelings who really believe the best thing for a sickly soul such as himself is to be tossed into the ancestor plant. He simply refuses to follow such a fate though. And nobody else can fly, so nobody can stop him. Radita uses Runaway and Radita uses Fly, and I'm hoping Radita will use um, Charm pretty soon on some of the lovely ladies of the island, and we can pass on his wonderful traits as well. We also have some Royal Snoot babies. Also, it occurred to me the other day that if you read snoot wrong, it might look like snot. And I was like, I don't really want to call them the royal snot babies, but I could see how that might be a way that our nicheling tribe is sort of like, if they ever act too snooty, then we, then we might call the royals the snots. <laughs> like, oh, it's just the snots acting up again about their snoots. Um, so yeah, those are the important things I think about through my day is how our nichelings could could make a could make insults amongst their culture to each other. Like I said, if you're not here for the role play, I am not sure why you are here, my friends. Oh hey Frostros, good to see you. <laughs> Flute hammer, niche use fly, it's super effective. <laughs> 
Uh, we also want to go for some toxic berry snacks with Nala and the new toxic feigned baby boy that she just had today. Uh, and we want to do that because I'm really hoping to unlock toxic body for the island, which would be fantastic, especially if we don't have to sacrifice a nicheling to eat those toxic bodies in order to achieve that. And does we have food now? Because I couldn't remember if we had food now. The answer is we've got some food. Definitely don't want to slack on collecting it. Definitely don't want to slack on collecting it. Especially with all the babies that I want to go ahead and have. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have fun today. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you guys are just like, love the RP. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, definitely. I think they call them the snots behind their back. <gasps> Look at all the babies we have. Okay, guys, let's do a nursery check. We have... <gasps> Turn nip 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 nip. Oh, uh, actually, turn nip 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 nip. Oh, she's so cute. So we have the children of Lemon and No 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 No, and Burberry is getting quite old. So as terrible as it sounds, you guys, don't let me forget to have the elders step into the ancestor plants here in this tribe. I've been playing some of the other niche tribes like the phoenixes lately. So my mental habits might still be locked on phoenixes. And so I need you guys, as terrible as it sounds, as the days go by, to start yelling out, don't forget to have Burberry step into the toxic or step into the ancestor plant. Because he, he does want to end his days the way a proper fruit bat of this world does. This, this timeline, this reality, being able to become one with the jungle is vital. So don't let me forget. I may impulsively forget uh, because I've been playing some of the other tribes to get ahead for our recording of them. So yeah, don't, don't let me forget to feed our elders to the ancestor plants. <laughs> oh dear me. But Burberry, our little orphan, is actually reaching the end of his life. However, he and Lemina, no, 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 have had turn ip, 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 two daughters. One is turn ip, 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 who can do digging and insect collecting so she can at least help with the corruption, uh, which is currently affecting poor little Viriana, na, 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 which is totally unfair. And then, um,. Is that one nearby red? I think she's actually like bright orange. Uh, is she toxic body? <gasps> she's toxic bodied. How did that slip by us friends? Did you guys know she was toxic bodied? Cause I didn't know she was toxic bodied. Did you know she was toxic body? I am, I'm a little flummoxed. Here I thought she was just like the vibrant orange that tricked us. Cause there's, there. who was it who was born? like really really vibrant orange was it dragon fruit no somebody ha was just born really really bright orange but it wasn't actually toxic body but we actually have a toxic body baby too bad she can't eat any berries Jeez, that's so cool was it dragon fruit thank you guys oh it is good to see you today yeah, it was dragon fruit, I think, who was born. Uh, so orange, we thought she was toxic body. But yeah, I, I totally didn't notice. She's so tiny. Good job, little toxic turnip. Maybe I even called you a toxic turnip. That sounds familiar. I probably noticed, and then I forgot, because you're just so cute and small. It's easy to overlook you, but not anymore. Not anymore. You're my little toxic turnip. I just, I want to, I've never wanted to scoop a little niche baby up in my arms and just like give her little ears a little rub more than I have ever wanted to do right now, which is probably a bad sign because she's toxic bodied. So I would probably die. I probably don't want my first impulse to be, look at the toxic baby. I want to snuggle her and kiss her whittle ears. <laughs> Something tells me I wouldn't last long in the wilds. Oh dear. Uh, and then we have her older sister, Nectarine, who unfortunately has one deformed paw still plaguing us through the family tree. Um, but she has recessive toxic body, so we'll have to see what we do about that. So, all right, so that's what those two are up to.
Princess Peach is not really interested in having babies with anybody at the moment, but she has quite the long life, so we can still consider, because uh, these guys are playing on the extended life, aren't they? Yeah, they are. She has quite the long life, so she doesn't have to worry about that. We'll come back to what she does want to do, but everyone just knows her as Princess Peach because she was originally going to be Tepere's mate, and Tepere is, of course, the royal king of the island, uh, after Prince Garlic, actually. So, yeah, I think that um, Princess Peach is not very interested in him, though, because they share immunity, so it's kind of a stalemate of a potential mating. However, what was not a stalemate is the fact that now Passion and her beloved, beautiful, dainty, I just feel like uh, El Reva has like the daintiest little chin and that is just something that Passion loves about her and Passion really loves the wonderful, beautiful antlers on um, Elvira. Uh, really loves the wonderful, beautiful antlers on Passion. But they have come and they have offered to be the mothers of some of Tepe's childs. Childs, yes, childs. Children? Children. Uh, but at least the royal snoot will be passed on, even if they are each other's queen, and I still have no queen. So poor Tepe is still searching for love. Hopefully he will find it. Uh, meanwhile, down here, that's right, Tala, not Nala, sorry I called her Nala before, is pregnant and she she is very happy to be able to run into the waiting arms of Zunu who needs fed to the plant. Don't let me forget, guys, of strong and powerful Zunu. Um, I think she's also a little, a little flustered at the fact that Zunu is so easy to just leave her and forget about her. So I, I kind of, like she wants a mate who will stay by her side forever. Uh, so that maybe Yuzunu might be a Tepea, but I'm not sure. We will have to see. Uh, Yuzunu has just come of age and all he really wants in his life is to stay under his father's tree. But hey, if Tala decides to come and stay under the tree, then she will have a mate who's always by her side. But she really loves these toxic berries and she really loves a feeling of security and strength. And Tepe certainly has political strength. So we'll have to see. Uh, also, how close is she to unlocking? Do -do -do. Toxic body for us. Let's see. Not very close. Not even halfway there. We're working on it. <gasps> That's right. We had Garlic Goyle. What a freaking awesome name. What an awesome name. Yeah, we had Garlic Goyle last time. Uh, older sister Garlic Dragon, uh, who is learning the poetry that Garlic, what did you do to yourself? Ugh, Garlic has got a lot of life left. He just needs to nibble one of the healing kumquats. Um, Dragon Fruit is currently pregnant again because she was able to tell Garlic that she loves his poetry. And by the way, did you guys see did you guys see the amazing picture that Ren made for us? Ren, I'm not sure if I've seen you in today, uh, so I don't know if she's here today, but Ren is here for many of our wonderful niche adventures. Let me go ahead and grab the the picture. I think she just sent it this morning to my mail for Sari at gmail.com email, just in case you guys were wondering where to send fan mail. If you send it to me on Instagram, I actually can't see it because I only use Instagram on the computer and it doesn't show me when I get tagged. Uh, here it is. All right, because I want to read the poem that she actually wrote. This is a wonderful piece of fan art, my friends, of Garlic teaching his daughter, Garlic Dragon, the fine royal art of eating berries by poetry. You kind of know how, um, you know how in real life, a lot of, uh, especially Asian culture, you would drink tea and sit under the pretty leaves and recite poetry. Well, that's where I got the idea from. So he's reviving an ancient uh, fruit bat royal tradition 
of reciting poetry as you eat berries on a fine day. Because if there wasn't any bugs to eat and they didn't collect or do any of the other work because they had all of the other nichelings serving them, it makes sense that the royalty had free time on their hands to be able to come up with poems. So without further ado, O oh, tasty berries, tart and sweet, a perfect feast that we shall eat, beneath the trees, both high and low, this beautiful place we call our home. No matter the hardships, we shall thrive, for the jungle, you see, will always provide. Lovely. I love it. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I love it. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to see if we can come up with more poetry that the royals, when times are good and they're not frantically trying just to cling to survival, uh, will be able to recite to one another. I do think that this is actually the first line of poet nichelings that we have ever had too. <sighs> Wonderful. I love this kombucha. All right. What was going on over here? Durian in, 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 in. Do you think you can help me with these bundles? Oi, Radita. Can you help me with these bundles? I mean, you're not the best at it, to be honest, <laughs> but you could help me with these bundles. Is that everybody? No, the girls. And then of course we have a Capy Berna, who was reborn with little sister, very and Anna, uh, very Anna, -na 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 -na. and these two want to become the expert fishers of the tribe. They are very excited to go along and catch Razorina. Their favorite strategy is because they are like, funky toothed double clawed nichelings they look in the water and they want to check out they have funky teeth the razorina have funky teeth so i love the idea that these two really want to hunt by challenging each other to grab the razorina by the fangs and yank them out of the water so it's going to be so much fun but all right so that covers everybody on the island oh i'm sorry about that zunu except for zunu who i will try to find him a healing kumquat in just a minute here uh because he he deserves to have as long a life as he can uh is he our last birina descended baby by the way because kp berna got eaten and reborn hmm i think Huh. I actually, I actually think that he's our last, uh, our last Barina descended baby. Huh. All right. Well, where to begin first? You guys ready? Oh, is Rin here? Oh, hey, Rin. Thank you so much. All right. You guys ready? We've gone through everybody. We've got babies to have. We've got insects to scooch along. We've got work to do. Yuzu Nu, do not neglect the fact that your sacred duty of eat now that you have been reborn with the royal snoot, I know you want to return to your father's tree, but you have important duties to achieve in, in defending this land from the corruption. Exactly, Martin. It is time for no bugs. So let us go ahead and take care of these. All right, so today we begin and Yuzunu is going to immediately turn around because even though all he wants to do is go down to his father's tree in this second life that he has been given, he must instead go ahead and use the royal snoot that he has been born with. Yes, this royal snoot right here. Very fine royal snoot. Didn't quite mean to get that close up to it, but he must not neglect his duties. So let's get rid of these so that they don't affect the babies. I think the babies are uh, very happy not to have to worry about that. Like uh, little toxic toddlers running around his feet saying like, thank you, Uncle Yuzunu. <laughs> and I think Yuzunu would be like, I I don't know about uncle. That's, um, that's a little okay then. <laughs> also the elders and the bush. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a few days to think about that. However, let's go ahead and I think the dragon fruit would stare down, especially atop a rabble mound. I can only imagine how much taller she feels than Prince Garlic. But she would stare down from the top of the mound and say, Garlic, you do not seem well. 
because he is a little droopy. Uh, he, he, he's fading slightly, perhaps a little more pale than usual. In fact, can you imagine <laughs> if, if the dragon fruit was like, garlic, you seem pale, more pale than usual, that is. Uh, so we're actually going to go ahead and since we have enough food, uh, I think he might pluck a berry just because he would try to, to not to die that he was feeling so weak. And we will have Garlic go ahead and jump over and nibble of the healing kumquat and vastly expand his life. Thank you very much. And then his daughter Garlic Dragon, I think, is going to start practicing her rhymes uh, down by the berry bush. So she is going to be practicing rhyming, which is going to be so nice. All right. And over here, Dorian, in, 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 in. What can you do, buddy? You can clear me some grass and you can dig me some roots. And that's about it. <laughs> Durian, in, 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 in. Um, I'm going to have you and Radata actually start exploring on this side together. Look at all those fine bundles. Radata. Oh, he got it. <gasps> oh my gosh. Radata just like took out a whole bunch of bundles at once. That's so cool. We'll have Durian and in, in, in pop over. I guess Radita was a little hungry, but I think Durian and in, 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 uh, was amazed to just watch Radita descend from the skies and like take out those bundles. That's so cool. I can't wait to have some better bundle hunter nichelings. All right. And then we do have the peaceful bear hanging out down here with Zunu. I do want to get Zunu a healing kumquat. He has a few days though, and I do think that he's a little suspicious about this peaceful bear. I wish we could find like another healing kumquat. There's a couple of them over here. So I think he's he's very suspicious about this this creature who was bearing the no pun intended because he's a bear. <laughs> but I think he's a little suspicious about this bearer of legends and I will try to keep the puns to a minimum today. I just have had quite a bit of green tea to start the afternoon. Uh, so he's a little suspicious, wants to make sure that nothing is up. So Zunu is going to go ahead and maybe spend a couple turns just sort of clearing some grass away. I think he'd risk it a little bit. There's a healing kumquat kind of close by. There's another one that he might be able to reach over here, but I think that he just really wants to make sure that he can kind of get a idea of what's on the side of the island. We're gonna go ahead and have pregnant Tala gather up some delicious berries because she is quite hungry. She will have her second baby very soon here, which is gonna be very fun. And then let's go ahead and have Princess Peach gather up some food. I don't think, oh, look at all the food we've got. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, so that's going well. Burberry. Five days is long enough to see your last child born. We'll manage somehow. Limina, no, 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 no. Uh, let's go ahead and have Limina, no, 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 no. The bear necessities. Oh, the crescent spirit. That's hilarious. Oh, and I love the bear emojis. Um, let's see. And we're going to have Limina, no, no, no. Clear away some of the grass. I think she just wants to kind of get a good look. Oh, let's have her lick the fruit off of her mate. What am I doing? What am I doing not unlocking her snout? Guys, how did you let that slip out of my attention? I guess because it has nothing to do with eating bugs, which is really how you become royal in this society. But you people are so obsessed with cats. I cannot believe you have let me go this far without trying to unlock her snout. I'm a little stunned. I didn't know you had the restraint in you. Aw, Solar, Solar, hey! I just found some more of your art the other day, I think. Uh, Cause I've been sorting my, my entire, I'm finally caught up on my fan art folder. And if you've sent me fan art and I never replied, I had to make a rule to, to clear out all 8,000 emails that I could only reply if it was in the last two weeks but I have officially sorted all of it, so that's good. Uh, all right, but limited no-no, you go ahead. I can't believe that you people 
Hey, I can't believe that. I know, right, Girl Scout Brownie? Normally people are like, I need purse snout in my life and you've let me go this far without purse snout. Holy cow. Restraint. <gasps> Babies! Babies! Okay, it's almost time. We're gonna go ahead to pair back into your location, my dear. Uh, let's go ahead and scout out this spot. I think Passion and El Reva just became pregnant. So we're gonna go ahead and let them kind of spend another minute uh, clearing away the grass, just kind of getting comfortable, sort of scouting out where they might want to establish nest. And are you guys ready? All right, let's take a look. I don't see anybody. <sighs> yes, Bernadette, you know it is the time. All right, queen, wait, I missed. Queen, queen, no one, no one. Ah, all right. Oh, and I forgot that dragon fruit still needs to move. She just got pregnant, so it's gonna be a couple days before she gives birth. Oi, that's mine. Back off, you little, you little, uh-oh. Well, that's not the kind of queen you were expecting to pair. Um, oh, you're freaking kidding me. You guys, we have a Berina. Zunu knew these bears were trouble. He knew these bears were trouble. Can you imagine what uh, Yuzunu is saying right now? All I can imagine is that, is that he's like on the other side of the bushes, his little royal snout in the air, yelling, I knew it, I knew it. They're back! They won't let me have a, a peaceful second life alive! <laughs> They're back! I think this is enough to make Tala want to faint. Maybe she and Yuzunu will actually bond over their mutual, like, skittishness. Um, or maybe this- because um, honestly, Tapere can't really defend her. Um, Yuzunu can't defend her either. The best one to defend her is actually Zunu. Uh, so I can't believe this. <laughs> Tapere, I mean, you can't breed with the Barina because they're always boy babies, but dang. Sorry, buddy. Maybe it's your song? Maybe you should, you should try saying something else? Uh, but let's tackle this. Like, literally. What are you doing, Bundle? Are you gonna try? <laughs> you have, n you have... This is, this is the bundle equivalent of it, such an immense lack of self-preservation. This is the bundle who wins the Darwin Award of the day. Look at this little guy. This little guy just ran up to his burrow going, what's going on guys? When there's Yuzunu and Barina right here. This silly little bundle, silly little bundle. Also, yeah, please don't eat our baby. Like, that's kind of a big deal. That's definitely something that Tala would jump over and defend. Uh, even though she's petrified, she will not let her child be... Oh, we saved him! Bok Choy! All hail the power of your father! Are you missing an arm? Oh, jeez. It was just... It was just hiding in the bundle meat. My goodness gracious. Uh, so there we go. Zunu has just saved his son. I think Tala is quite impressed, but she'd be more impressed if- Zunu, please don't leave my side again. She'd be more impressed if she had a mate who, uh, like, would just stay and defend. Uh, which, uh, we'll have to see what path she ends up taking. Unfortunately, Yu Zunu ended up getting the sleeping sickness because he has taken it into his body by eating the corruption of the bugs. Uh, but- Gotcha. Ha ha! The girls are starting to do their fishing and that will hopefully allow us to unlock some of the fishing. Let's see, seven swims would be webbed paw, which, eh, you know, I could take or leave webbed paw to be honest, but webbed hind legs, same diff. Um, tail fin. Some swimming bats might be kind of cool. Fishing tail. I mean, we could have a toxic, like, uh, fishing line. That would be kind of interesting. We'll see how that works out. Oh, enjoy breakfast, Space Dorito. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, Kovu. Tala's mother's instincts in full form, right? <sighs> so we took care of the Barina. Sorry. I think that Taper is just kind of like really getting sad now. Like, oh, I can't. I, 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 this is not working. <laughs> Poor Taper. Uh, all right. And I think, yeah, little Garlic Goyle is still too young. He is so freaking cool. He is one of the coolest looking nichelings that we have had for sure. He is too young to get out of the nest, which means that his mother is not going to be ready to give birth just yet. However, Garlic Dragon has now defended the berries, which I think would make her father very proud. So these two are going to gather some food here. Dragon Fruit is going to go ahead and continue to kind of clear out some of the unknown spots of the jungle. There is a ancestor plant there we need to be cautious of. <clears throat> right, Ren? I really love Garlic Goyle's amazing yellow eyes. He's going to be so cool when he grows up and he can stare out with like these stunning golden dragon eyes. He is taking this fruit bat line in a completely different direction than the fruit leaves. And I love it because Garlic Dragon and Garlic Goyle are kind of like the, the truest form of royalty next to Taper on this entire island. Um, and if you contrast like what they look like to our Fruitlies Let's Play, it's just amazing how different they are all becoming. It's so fun. Oh, hey, Paint Seagull, welcome back. Oh, more bundles. <laughs> all right, there's bundles everywhere. And Radita is now going to be on the search for a healing kumquat. So we're gonna have him start using fly to search the island. Excellent, excellent. Um, can these two swim? Can the can these two swim in the creek yet, or are they too small? Do you guys know? Like, could you let me know? Um, is it safe to to throw these two into the creek to chase Razorina yet? Let me know while I scooch some of my nichelings around. Burberry, you have four days left. I think he and Lemon and No 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 are gonna spend the time kind of snuggling. He's gathering up fruit. She'll lick off the um, the juice, and they'll just kind of snuggle and talk about how happy they are about their their two little ones. Too small? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna. These two kids are gonna have to be patient then. All right, you guys stay up here. You can kind of run around. You can look at things, but you can't go in the water to chase down the Razorina yet. Princess Peach, you are a very quiet nicheling. I really don't think she has big aspirations in life at this point. She may even eventually want mutations that have nothing to do with the fruit bat line. Uh, is that everybody? Yep, just the last three. Okay. So, I don't know if it's time yet. Uh, Elvaya, you might want to make a nest over here. I think that she wants to nest right over here, even though it's rather close to the ancestor plants. Let's go ahead. Ah, that hurts you, Passion! Passion was trying to be sweet like Burberry and Lemon and No No No, uh, but she, like, pricked her tongue on, El on her mate's spikes. That must be so painful. Oh my gosh. All right, that didn't work. Um, and if we get any closer to these spots, then the ancestor plants might regrow and eat our babies. So I think that we're actually going to have passion. They want to be nest sisters. I feel like passion wants to give a little bit more space to the nest so that they can see what's going on. So we're going to have her nest over here and we'll have to feed her a healing kumquat in the future because we hurt her tongue. We pierced her tongue on her mate's spikes. That's just, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> All right. And now the time has come once more, my friends. Queen? Hmm. Queen? Queen? Oh, to pair. Are you just going to be calling out the rest of your life, buddy? Has he unlocked... Maybe... Has he unlocked the peacock tail? Maybe when he unlocks peacock tail, we'll be there, guys. Maybe that's when the... The... 
moments will be okay. There we go. That he'll actually get his queen. <sighs> no queen! Carry on! <gasps> Babies! Oh, you guys. Okay. Some of you may have seen it, but let's take a vote. How many of you guys think that the royal snoot was passed on? And how many of you guys think uh, that we we have not had any luck on the royal snoot? Let me see. I, I don't even know what emoji you would use for that. So let me just, do you guys think we, ha we have two babies? They are Tapere's babies that were just born. Do we have the royal snoot? What say thee? Do we have like one royal snoot? Two royal snoot? Zero royal snoot? What do you guys think? Some of you may have caught a glimpse, but I wanted to jump over and see what you guys thought. Because maybe this will let Tapere go ahead and and not be quite so sad. And Kitty Cat Gamer, I love the idea. He must go into the unknown to find a mate. Uh, he must get alongside his people instead of up in a throne. I love that Kitty Cat Gamer. We may kick him off the throne and have him wander to search for a mate after he unlocks the peacock tail. Snoot, snoot, snoot. I see. I see everyone saying one royal snoot. Three royal snoot. How do you get three royal snoots? <laughs> that would be awesome if we had twins, right? All right, you guys ready? You guys ready? Dun, 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 dun. It is with great honor that we announce the births of Buttercup Squash. May we have a moment of bliss and yellow like emojis of flower or fruitness to celebrate the arrival of Her Majesty Princess Buttercup Squash. I cannot believe that she randomly generated from a list of a couple hundred fruits and vegetables that I wrote down and random syllables. I am, I am like, almost shocked silent by how perfect this is <laughs> like completely perfect this is <laughs> buttercup squash what a name she had hundreds of random names she could have been given and it's buttercup squash the snoot has been passed on <gasps> you guys is this the lesson to Para needs to know? Is this the lesson that he will not perhaps in his life find a queen, but instead his heart will overflow with parental love towards his princess daughter? I don't I think that even if he found a queen now, he would completely ignore her because he'd be so enamored with his little girl. He would just be like this this is the queen of my heart, my daughter. I shall I shall do the best I can to lead the tribe to take care of her. I am so in love with her and I think her father is too. I think that, that he just looked down, completely disappointed to once again not find the romantic true love he wanted. And there, curled up in the nest, her, her little wing, I can just imagine it, her little bat wing maybe pulled up over her face so he didn't know what she looked like at first. And then she stretched and pulled her little bat wing away and he saw the royal snoot. And in just like the Grinch's heart growing like 10 times larger, I feel like Tapere was humbled and realized, oh, this, this is true love. I think in a twist of fate, he has actually found his true love and it is actually, it is actually taking care of his little daughter. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh my goodness. Oh, and she doesn't have any damage. She's fine. She's just such a little cutie. And we also have Pokeweed. What? <laughs> how, how were these two named so perfectly? I am stunned. Because this little one is named Pokeweed, and I think she is 1000% the daughter of El Reva and Passion, but she has claw and she has spikes. She's got spiky body. She has inherited Passion's bat wing, so she can still be part of the bat wing line. Uh, well, Passion, I say. You know what I mean. 
to pair as Batwing. Uh, but Passion can be like, she looks just like me. Uh, even though they're not like blood related. Uh, but her name's Pokeweed. She randomly generated with the name Pokeweed when she's covered in spikes. I feel, I feel like I have been completely blessed by the random, like the random whims of the Nishling gods today because these two just popped up with the perfect names. I am, I am absolutely in love with them. So Buttercup Squash, who is a very delicate little nicheling, she has quite a bit of strength. Um, however, she does have big body and she has the same black eyes that her father Tapera does and her mother Passion. Uh, and then we have little Pokeweed. And I think that Tapera just found the real queen of his life. He didn't find a queen, he found his princess. And I think that he is wrapped around her, her snoot from day one. And we may have him continue to call just to unlock the peacock tail, but I think he is just gonna be like a thousand percent the best dad and dedicated to that. It's so cool. Oh my gosh. All right, so that's amazing. I am really, 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 really pleased with that. Uh, okay, so what to do? Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the island. It truly is a miracle. I This is going to my joy journal. It's just so perfect with the names and so perfect for Tapere's story to really grow into finding true love in his child, in, in his love of her, which is just wonderful. All right, Birdberry, you've got three days left, so we can still have you sticking around, my friend. Uh, thank goodness. And we're going to go ahead... Let's go ahead and have Princess Peach gather some food over here. And I think she's going to do a little bit of clearing of grass now. We're gonna work our way in kind of in a spiral and deal with this group last because they're currently kind of my favorites. Uh, oh, hey, little Nectarine is old enough to start helping out with tending around the nest. I think Lemon and No 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 is just gonna re-nest right over here next to Burberry, who is going to be picking this fruit uh, to share with like everybody around here. There we go. And El Reva, she has her beautiful daughter that I think she's quite proud about. Uh, and she does like being kind of independent. El Reva, can you gather anything around here? I think she'd be a little annoyed that she didn't have more to gather. Uh, so she's gonna be looking at the ancestor plant at least. Um, This is so cool. Okay, I'll deal with them in a second because I'm very excited with how this has turned out. And Zunu really needs to get the healing plant if he wants to, to live longer. Because he could have quite a few days left. So I think that I think that he'll be weakened from his fight with the Berina. And I think that Tala in her distress will start getting quite upset and insisting that he goes to get a healing plant. So let's see if we can should we have Well, we're gonna try to have Zunu make it. I think he's gonna look at his son Bok Choy and his pregnant mate and feel guilty for possibly leaving them behind. But I don't know if he can actually make it to the healing fruit now that it's hot. I forgot he had big body, so I thought we had more time. And the only way to really get him there fast would be destroying one of Tala's precious poison berry bushes. Uh, and there's only two of them on the island. So I think Zunu's gonna go ahead and try to like pull himself across the river. But I don't know if he's gonna make it in time, guys. That's gonna be really touch and go. And I think Tala is ready to give birth, uh, mostly out of the shock of everything she's been through. So we're gonna have her scooch over here. Oh, hey, Abby. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so cool, okay. And then meanwhile, Yuzunu is trying to use his royal snoot to defend everyone who is being plagued by the corruption. And I think very Ananana is going to jump over. And I feel like these two are gonna try to avoid, um, they're gonna try to avoid the corruption, but they really want to get in at the Razorina. So they might actually play. I feel like KB Barina might want to get some sort of vision. <laughs> some sort of vision. Uh, so they might actually play with this big plant. We're gonna have to see about that. They might, they might do one of the things that we occasionally have the nichelings of this island do, 
where they jump into the plant to have a vision from the ancestors and then they jump out um, with the vision. So we might do that with these plants to get them out of the way just so that we can do a little more exploring over here, which would be really fun. All right, let's see. Then we have Garlic Goyle. His mom is ready to give birth again. So scooch over, little, little dragon-eyed child. Dragon Fruit is ready to have her children. We're gonna go ahead and let Garlic gather up some berries and speak to his mate, Garlic Dragon. Garlic Dragon, what to do with you, my dear? Hmm, she has royalty, but she can't do much, which kind of sounds appropriate, doesn't it? <gasps> Ooh, Scorpion Tail. That is some painful fertility on her, holy cow. Uh, she can also collect? Hmm. So I might send her around this tree then and let her kind of collect over here. I think, I think, what if she's wondering like, okay, if we eat berries to tell poetry, what happens when you eat a stinky kumquat? Like what kind of poetry can you tell from eating a stinky kumquat? That would be kind of interesting to think about too. Do you do you start telling like epic stories if you eat a stinky kumquat? Comedies maybe? Ooh, and actually Radata. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, Radata, you need to come and eat the healing fruit. So, oh, Radata used fly. That was so cool. So he's come over, flying overhead everyone to steal of the healing fruit. And we're trying to get him to do enough fly that we can unlock bird beak because we still don't have a another double winged nicheling yet. And meanwhile, Durian has found himself on this side of the island where he is going to start doing some exploring. Phew! Oh, Ethan! Dear Buttercup, how to say to you, you have my eyes, you have your mother's choice of name. When you were born, you cried and it broke my heart, my princess from Tepere. That's so cute! Uh, all right, and we're gonna have, let's have, oh, passion. You're gonna go ahead and clear that away and just kind of defend the area and watch over our new little buttercup squash princess. Both of these children need to have bat wing because they are descended from the bat line. And are you guys ready? I think that we know who the real, the real queen of Tepere's heart is now, but we will continue to call out until he unlocks that tail. Where's my tail? So eight more times, and then we will have unlocked the tail. All right. Queen? Queen? I guess this actually, Bernadette, you're right. He, I think he's gonna start up singing for Queen and he's just going to have like a song of joy now, which is really nice. Oh, Terry. Nice fruit with nice smell. Eat kumquat, we will. We shall heal. I like, I like how there's just like poetry and haikus emerging from amongst our nichelings. It is a time of plenty if you are able to focus on poetry and haikus. All right, I think we have two babies about to be born. So let's go ahead and have these two babies born and then I'm gonna take a quick break to make more tea. So let us see the results. Three babies! <gasps> Holy canoodle days! Oh! boy oh me oh my all right guys um i know what i see apparently there's there's more to see but i'm gonna be so naughty Ta -da! and we're gonna take a quick little ad break with our wonderful pixel biology ads so that i can get some fresh tea and some more water and then we are gonna see what those three babies just were because it's gonna be so fun Also, Bernie Daddy, you're right! We're gonna be able to save Zunu now because it's raining and he'll be able to make it to the healing kumquat. Bernie Daddy, that's awesome. You're rooting for him. I really appreciate that.
All right, my tea is almost done boiling. And do you guys have any uh, any questions, my friends? Any questions for me? Oh, I'm noticing you guys are starting to go back and be quite the little detectives on what happened to our nichelings. We will be looking over them as soon as my tea is done. Oh, gosh. I don't even know. I don't even know some of the details that you guys are already theorizing. So it's going to be quite the shocking surprise for me as well. Oh, I'm glad you guys remember Blue. What? There's no music. Rude. Rude stream ads. You were supposed to have music playing the whole time. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, Swanfeather. How do I keep up the RP in my series? Uh, I really focus on just having fun for myself. Kind of immersing in the world. Thinking about how the characters develop. Oh, my tea is done. Uno momento, friends. I hope you have a great day. And then just really quickly to answer your question, Swanfather, how do I keep up the RP in my series? I really think for me, because I can do open-ended series where the plot can change any time, I focus on thinking from the character's point of view instead of thinking from what I want the plot to be. I am willing to change my plot at any time when I role play because I can the way I'm currently doing it. Very open-ended. I don't have uh, like a set word count. I don't have an editor that I'm trying to turn a book into or anything like that. So I can change the plot to be whatever I want. And I usually find that for my role play, I'm a lot happier when I do that. But if you were writing a book, I feel like really good books are kind of the combination of constantly thinking from a character's point of view and constantly trying to have them live organically and then having a plot that kind of the character uh, wasn't, the character should never live just to act out your plot, I feel. A good story is written in the tension between a character's organic role playing and the plot. So you have a plot, you know you want your character to go from being like a village uh, a village nerd to being the like best friend of the princess at the castle. So that's your plot. And I think the a way to write really good books and good stories isn't to write a character who fits that plot. It's to write a living character and then to have kind of the, the conflict between that living character acting out that plot, making the story. So that's just my opinion um, and may indicate that I'm thinking about writing a book of my own soon. Uh, that's just my opinion, but books I read where people write the character to fit a plot never have enough life to them. They always have very flat characters that don't feel like they're really living their life. They just exist to do X, like A, B, and C on the steps of the plot. And then of course you can't really have a book that has no plot without being really talented at like pulling out 
the story, the plot of someone's life. And usually people want a bigger story than that. Uh, so I think that a good book is written between the two. And if you do what I do, then a willingness to let go of the plot and just think from the character's role playing uh, is how you can just continue to have fun with role playing. If you're stuck at playing with a character, you're probably actually stuck because you're not immersing yourself in their life or in their world enough. You need to have kind of a injection of creativity and maybe read a good book or watch a good series or practice world building to really get yourself back into what their environment would be like. Or you're you have a plot in mind and you want that character to fit the plot and you're having a hard time making those two things meet. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Okay. Anyway. Oh gosh, thank you, Nug. Uh, I, I am thinking about writing books. They'd probably have nothing to do with most of my series, just FYI, because <laughs> uh, it'd, be, it'd be something else entirely. Uh, all right, here we go. Stretching, got my tea. You guys ready? Let's review these babies. Dun, 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 dun. So let's start with the one at the back. <laughs> It's another toxic baby. Her name is Date. I like it. That really fits her. So it is a toxic snouted baby who's good at digging. That's really sweet. Lemon and no, 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 no. I wish you and Burberry, who only has two days left to, to be with us. I wish you two could have had slightly more useful babies, but that's okay. Uh, I, I like, I, I mean, Date's precious. Don't get me wrong. She can help us with clearing things. But it's not really, and she can help us swim, I guess, to unlock some genes, but not really helping us on the whole gathering food thing there. That's, that it happens. And meanwhile, <gasps> look at this little wine. Look at this little wine. My friends, my friends, I love him. I love him. And actually, Terry uh, had a great name for this little one that our patrons really loved in Patreon chat. Uh, Drag Onion. And I love that. Drag Onion. <laughs> to go with uh, Garlic Dragon and Garlic Goyle, we have Drag Onion. And he looks like a little onion, doesn't he? I love him. He is fantastic. He uh, has pretty good genes too. Pretty good genes. Still working on getting those uh, bat wings really going. It's very hard to get bat wing going unless you double up on the, the bat wing line. But bat wings also don't help you gather squat for food. So it's probably helpful to kind of have an interesting mix of these things. But I love it. I love that name, Terry. You're really coming up with like fantastic pun related names for this line. And I deeply appreciate it. So Drag Onion, welcome to the family, little guy. He also is not the sickly baby. His date is not the sickly baby. Drag Onion is not the sickly baby. Do we have a sickly baby? <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. It's a baby girl. Oh no. <laughs> Not Rose. Not Rose, why? Oh, you guys. Oh, it's a tragedy. <laughs> She's got double K immunity. Oh, this is so sad. She's got double K immunity. She has the royal snoot. She has the ability to crack open nuts. We need that on this island because there's so many coconuts everywhere. But you all know the fate of the sickly children. And I think that this would make Tala just devastated. I think that I, I, I think that she would be I think this would drive her drive her quite deeply into some sorrows, to be honest. Because we have a sickly one. This is very sad. I, I have a feeling I know how this is going to play out. Well, let's go ahead and take care of a couple things really quickly. We're going to go ahead and have Yuzunu, who perhaps hears the, the terrified, sad wails of this mother uh, from across the bushes and sees through the, the lines of what is happening. 
that her child has been born very, very sickly indeed, just not well for this world whatsoever. Uh, he's going to take care of this corruption, and I think he is going to really be thinking deeply about his place on this island and how he might be able to relieve Portala of her pain. So... We're going to be... Is that Tepere's queen? Unfortunately, we couldn't even keep her around for that because she, she doesn't even have good immunity for that. But I do think I have a plan because Yuzunu was reborn, right? And Yuzunu smells good to Tala. They have immunity so that they would not have a sickly child. So I'm kind of thinking that they might... They might guide this very sick baby. I just feel like the babies who are born sickly on this jungle island, other than like Radata, are so sickly that they're just not well for this world. So it's kind of like a, a gentle thing to return their energy to the jungle. But I think he would offer, I think he would offer Tala comfort. He would tell her how he was reborn so quickly and how like he he's glad to have another shot at life even if things are very different. And I think that these two uh, would have little Naros reborn under this tree. So I think that's where we're going to go for that um, that line. And I just really don't think that Radata would actually save her from her fate for two reasons, guys. There's two reasons. One, he has spent his whole life kind of dodging being tossed in the plant himself. Um, and so he, I feel like he is a little bit more self-focused, this Radata. I feel like he is not really one to go out of his way to save another nicheling. Um, I feel like he also is aware of a second thing, guys. I think he's aware of the fact that we have got limited healing kumquats. He has just eaten several of them on the island. He has flown across this island, eating them as he goes, and he has to continue to eat them to stay alive. He is almost on death's door right at this very moment, and he's old enough that he would not end up being reborn into the island. So if he takes a sickly nicheling under his wing, that means less healing kumquats for him. So, I don't think he'd do it because he, like, look, that didn't even cure him all the way. He is too aware of the limited healing kumquats, and I think he is too aware of, like, the risks and the dangers that, that he is kind of subject to with the rest of this tribe thinking that the best thing for him uh, is to be fed to this ancestor plant. So, I, I think that he's actually going to look out for himself. You know what I mean? <laughs> very sad. Very sad indeed. All right. Garlic. Dragon fruit, I think, would be eyeing up and a little frustrated not to be able to catch Radata as usual. Uh, but she's going to continue to do her patrolling of the area and just make sure that all is well. Little Garlic Goyle is going to pop up to hang out with his mom. He is descended from royalty, so he needs a blue icon. There we go. And then garlic over here is going to go ahead and gather up some berries because there is an abundance of berries. And I think this guy likes his poetry. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that. And then over here, garlic dragon, I think she's just trying on like some new songs uh, like, or some new, new limericks maybe. I have no idea what garlic dragon is. Yeah, I have no idea what Garlic Dragon may actually be um, practicing, but I think she's trying new literary styles, sitting here, kind of dangling her feet in the river uh, while this Razorina tries to nibble her toes and she pulls them back just before. <laughs> and she's just plucking the kumquats and maybe like practicing rhymes to herself and just a very laid back kind of princessy life. Uh, so she's kind of interesting down there. And then over here, oh, there's actually something to dig about time. Holy cow. Durian and Inn is clearing away the grasses down here. Passion is kind of taking care of this area and watching over Princess Buttercup Squash. Then we have got uh, Elreva, who is going to be gathering the ancestor fruits from here. And then we're going to come over 
There's another healing kumquat over here. Burberry has two days left. So these are his final days to watch his little toxic daughters uh, and little Nectarine kind of play around. But he has had a great long life. I really think that he and Limina No 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 have had an unexpected love story since Limina No 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 saved him twice from from certain doom in the ancestor plants. So we're going to go ahead and allow them to hang out as a little family here. And it appears that Princess Peach has a little bundle in her arms. I think that she doesn't have it in her to attack the bundle at the moment because she likes the company. But I really think she's very shy when it comes to the other nichelings. Uh, all right, let's come over here. And then... Now we can actually save Zunu, which is what many of you want to do. Zunu, you're gonna die. He can't swim. You guys, he can't swim. He doesn't have enough swimming. So all I can do, <gasps> Oh my gosh, all he can do is just let him... He's gonna die. Ah, Zunu, you tricked me. I'm so sorry, buddy. Your daughter is born so sickly and now you're gonna die outside of the jungle. That means you're gonna go straight to the freaking afterlife. You're not going to be returned to the jungle to watch over the tribe because you can't swim fast enough. He needed to go one, two, three. Like he needed to eat on the third move. And he he's big bodied and barinad, so he can't even <laughs> Zoo no I I guess the fish are gonna take his bones. And I think that Tala is actually going to run from this tragically sad situation. Uh back into the shadows where she can just kind of like cry and and have little bok choy by her side so this is sad all around sad all around <sighs> all right i think we're gonna have to have yuzunu console tala after this ridiculousness um yeah the tribe is like come on zunu Get to the other side. You could still have like seven days left to live. Um, yeah, so Zunu, I'm sorry, buddy. I think, I think I kind of like the idea, guys. I wish that he could live long enough to like escort the little one, um, escort her to the other side. But at least here, he's gonna, he's gonna have his bones. I think he kind of likes the idea of his bones watching over everyone from the heart of the jungle. So that's where his bones are actually going to be. Oh, hello, little nut hatch landing on my window. Are you here for, for this tragedy? We've got to turn this around. We just had like a fantastic time and then we have all of this tragedy going on. Yeah, I think that, I think that Zunyu kind of wants to maybe watch over his little ones. Um, spirit not poor little na rose we're gonna have her be reborn though as the first child of yuzunu and tala but no we cannot do anything about zunu however he has lived a good life and he has left behind his son bok choy so he has indeed achieved quite a bit and i kind of feel like the twins want to start playing with this ancestor plant so what do you think? We I think that with all the stuff going on, the toxic twins are going to be really into maybe diving into the ancestor plants and trying to get visions from them. So who should go? Should we send very Ananananana or should we send Capy Barana who has already be reborn once? But I think these two are going to be a little bit a little bit fascinated with dreams from the ancestors to the point where the ancestors are like you two again. So who should we send? Should we send the purple twin or the green twin? Uh, and they're going to jump into the ancestor plant. The other twin is going to work on getting them out. And they're going to try to come back with some sort of vision. Oh, and guys, I don't use cheats in niche because I, I just worry about breaking the save file. That would, that would upset me way too much. Yeah, very on -na -na -na. A lot of you guys are 
voting. Maybe they'll take turns. Maybe they'll take turns because some of you are voting. Um, like it's actually split pretty even. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's actually like even. Uh, I think KP Barona will go first to kind of rep like because she's she who used to be he is KP Barona or KP Barra. Um, has already done this before, and I think that maybe like talking about her previous life as KP Barona as KP Barra um, has made Veriana -na 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 very curious about the ancestors, and maybe they want to see what their mom has to say. Uh, so let's go ahead, and we're actually going to allow them to jump into the ancestor plant because they get visions that way, and it's also how we can clear the plant so we can actually harvest over here and gather up the food inside the plant, by the way, guys. And then the other twin is going to free them. So it's going to take a couple turns, but we'll be able to eat from a healing kumquat if it regrows and they're young. So go for it, Kipi Barina. All right, save your sister. It's going to take a minute, but save your sister. And then over here, like these two, they're, they're basically adrenaline seekers. I mean, they like to catch Ray's arena by the literal fangs. So of course they think jumping into ancestor plants to have visions with the ancestors is a cool deal. Good luck, you two. Um, and then we're going to have to pair go ahead. And are you guys ready? Yeah, flute hammer. KP Perna with pear, like it's a pun on KP Barras. Um, the Berina, KP, KP Para was a Berina baby, so we named it KP Perna to be like a fruit pun on KP Barra, which in KP Barra was a pun on the uh, Berinas that we have because it was a half Berina baby. Yeah, we've kind of got a wild, a wild group going on here. Puns upon puns upon puns. All right, let's do this. Um, actually, I think he'd just be singing joy now for his little buttercup. Buttercup blossom, buttercup blossom. Who the heck are you? Iceberg lettuce. You don't even smell right either. Oh my gosh! Well, we have, clearly, this is a playmate for Buttercup Blossom. Welcome to the tribe, child. You shall be the princess's, uh, the princess's playmate, surely. Uh, what are you doing staring down that razorina? That is a very odd hobby to have as a young nicheling. I do hope you will have slightly more decorum as you are become the princess's playmate, my dear. Uh, we, we, do not, we do not spend our days staring down razorina in the mud. We spend our days tending to the royal snoot and singing the song of the snoot. So, so truly, if you can overcome your, your countryside ways, I shall accept you as, um, Iceberg Lettuce, the companion playmate who can't see Jack <laughs> of the wonderful princess, whose sister is kind of, she has a sister in Pokeweed, but I really feel like Buttercup Squash, like, in exchange for having, you know, for, for him fathering their daughters. Uh, I do feel like Buttercup Squash is going to come and basically live with Tapere. So this is hilarious. Uh, come along, Iceberg Lettuce. And yes, I do see that she has recessive purse now. So maybe she'll end up starting a new nanny line. <gasps> Think about it, guys. We could have... Um, we could have a new nanny line where their job is to be nannies and healers to royalty, and they could be focused on purse now, basically. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and invite her into the tribe and then have her jump on up. So welcome, Iceberg Lettuce. Should we go ahead and rename her to something a little simpler? Or should we leave the name Iceberg Blood? Well, she's got a toxic body. There's nothing in her other than like a little bit of albinism to indicate that she might come from the snows. So we're going to make her a little healer, but I kind of want to rename her. Maybe Ice, Ice, Ice Lace, Lace? I want to rename her to Lace, actually. Normally I let you guys do it, but I just really feel strongly I want to rename her Lace. Um, and we're going to, we're going to have her potentially start a new, 
kind of nanny slash healer line whose job is to watch over the royal babies and maybe heal uh, nichelings starting with like royalty and going on down who might need some healing. So that's going to be fun. I'm, but I want to name her Lace. I, I normally take on your guys' names, but there's something about her that just is calling out to me. Also, there's something about all of this that is calling out to me. But all right, guys, it is time to say goodbye to Zunu, who has decided that he does not want to be part of the jungle energy, but instead seeks after larger answers to the questions of who he is. What does it mean to be a nicheling? What does it mean to be descended from Berina? And he fears he can only find those answers in the afterlife. So, are you guys ready? Oh gosh, you guys. <laughs> Fine. There. I compromised. Her name is Iceberg Lettuce, also known as Lace. <laughs> you guys are just, oh my goodness gracious. All right. Rest in peels, Zunu. Rest in peels. Over too soon. Over too soon. Ah. All right. Well, we've got a baby we have to have reborn because poor little Na Rose is not going to be long for this world. We've got a sister. KP Berna, who I think might pop out. We'll have to what 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 vision do you guys think she just had? <gasps> I know. Because these two are not descended from the um these two are not descended from the bat line at all. So give me just a second. I'm going oh, where's my tablet? Okay. Let me know if this lags the stream. Please don't lag the stream. Okay, hang on. If this lags the stream. Don't do it. Don't you dare do it. Don't you dare crash my stream. I'm going to randomly generate one mutation. Hang in there, guys. Randomly generating? Berina Claw? Oh my gosh. Okay, did that lag out my stream? Are y'all still here? Is everything still good? <laughs> but I randomly generated Berina Claw um, from the amazing random mutation generator that Unfeeling Metal made that you can find on Scratch. And I'm going to say that's the vision that KP, Bar or KP Perina actually got. So maybe the message was that she should try to have a Berina baby. Are you guys still there? Everything good? I'm seeing everything's good on my end, but I want to make sure everything's good on your end. Yay! Okay, good. I'm so relieved. Thank you guys for letting me know. But so KP Perna just received vision of Berina Claw. So I think she has been told by the ancestors to search out having a Berina mate potentially, which is pretty exciting. And now we will be able to regrow this plant and get into the stream without fuss. Also, Yuzunu, I think, is going to be batting these insects away quite irritated. And then he is going to be flying across oh, more of these dreaded things to try to make his way over to where Tala, no doubt, is crying in the shadows and clutching a little bok choy to her and wondering what fate will will fall upon them as little Na Rose is so sickly and her mate has just passed away and it is too much for her to cope with and whatever shall she do? <sighs> we will have to find out. Meanwhile, Ratatatata. Can he get up on that tree without getting... Okay, he should be able to get up on the tree without getting in trouble. So we're gonna let Radata jump up and he's gonna do some calling. There we go. How close? Two more, two more, and we will be able to unlock the tail. I am so excited. Uh, all right, and little garlic goyle, what can you do, buddy? He can do quite a bit of attack. So I think he's gonna follow his mom around and see as she clears away some spots. I'm so excited about dragon onion, drag onion. Uh, and then Garlic is going to continue to gather up berries. Their daughter, Dra Garlic Dragon, is going to continue to gather up kumquats and practice her poetry. Maybe her limericks at this point. Durian and in and in will clear away those things. And then, all right, wiggling our way back over. Let's start back here. <gasps> oh no! Friends! It is time! 
It is time to say goodbye to Burberry. To Burberry, the orphan who arrived on this island back when Banana was still alive. Are you all ready for this? I think. Should we, should we have, they don't really, I think three is good on their kids because they're not really having very useful children, I'm sorry to say. Should we go ahead and allow Limited No, 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 and Burberry to have one last child, if it takes? Um, I feel like, I feel like Burberry's content with how many kids they have had for quite a while, uh, but they, I really worry. Okay, should we allow them to have one last child? Or should, I feel Burberry is done. Lemon and no, no, no. Really probably should focus on the kids that she has. Oh, no sound effects in the game. Thank you, Rachel. My bad. Okay, we're gonna try. One last kiss. One last kiss, Burberry. He's like, I, this is a lot to take in. I just don't know. Um... Burberry, you will be returning to the jungle. One day, I will join you and we will watch over our children. Uh, oh, he's not ready. <gasps> I just don't know, Lemon and No-No. Leaving the girls, they're so small. I will protect them and watch over them. And one day, I will join you. Oh, she has reassured her mate. He, he is going to gather a couple last fruits for the children. And now, very, very old, and very, very tired, he is going to step into the ancestor plant. Ah! Okay. I think the children are going to be a little bit curious about what's going on. That's normal. They're learning the facts of life here in the jungle. Princess Peach? You're just, you're doing your Princess Peach thing? That's fine. Uh, all right, and then over here, Iceberg Lettuce Lace, you're gonna be sent over here to become a, uh, a friend of Buttercup Squash. And to pair, we're gonna have Passion. Yes, yes. We're gonna have to pair, uh, Buttercup. Oh, Buttercup. Do Buttercup. The last calls. And he has done it! He has unlocked Peacock Tail! We are giving this boy a Peacock Tail, guys. And he is going to be coming over to visit with Passion in just a moment here. So that hopefully we will be able to have more bebes. Uh, also, Elvira is gathering up the last of these fruits. So we'll want to scooch out of the way and teach Pokeweed the way to watch over the danger of the jungle. We need a Toad or a Mario for Princess Peach. Oh my gosh, that'd be hilarious. If we get a toxic body in male, um, who, if we get a toxic body in male, we, we will definitely look into that. Uh, but we have Peacock Tail, you guys! Okay, let's go ahead. Next up. Rest in peace, Burberry. We didn't even get an alert for Burberry passing away. Oh my gosh. Rest in peace, buddy. Rest in peace. All right. Wow. We've got a few, like, kind of sad, quiet moments, but otherwise, things are actually going fairly well. Yuzunu is going to eat those insects. Tala is still, like, deliriously upset and confused. Little Bok Choi is just following his mom around. Um, little Na Rose is not doing well, so she's going to have to visit an ancestor plant in the future. Meanwhile, Veriana Na Na Na. Hmm. Hmm. We'll come back to the twins in just a second. Uh, Ratatatata. I wanted to let him go ahead and see if he could attract anything. Garlic Goyle is going to follow his mother. Dragon Fruit is going to continue to clear away the grasses. And as the baby gets older, get ready to have another child with garlic. The tribe is starting to fall into a regular pattern and routine, um, which is quite delightful to see. Garlic Dragon will gather up these fruits. 
There are many wonderful Razorina in the waters that I think the twins want to go for, but I do think that Variana wants to jump into this one and see what her vision of the future should be. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for just a moment. Uh, oh, hey, a bunnel. Got the bunnel. Hopefully we won't get bonked by a coconut. Um, and then still a danger plant. Alvara, I think, is going to jump down. And she's a little curious. She wants to make sure she does lots of exploring so that it's safe for her daughter. And we're gonna have Tape jump down from his spot and work his way over to visit with passion. Because little Buttercup Squash is older now and hopefully about to have a new friend in Iceberg Lettuce Lace, who can gather and so can buttercup squash. So I think these two are going to work on unlocking a purse snout so that we can give it to iceberg lettuce lace so that they will be able to go ahead and um, they will be able to have a nanny line, which a lot of you guys are very excited about. Yes, flute hammer. We have had many nichelings pass on, but that is the cycle of life. Speaking of the cycle of life, I think Passion will agree to potentially having another child with the pair. Um, I don't know how I want to influence that child to possibly have. <sighs> so I'm going to just leave it up to the whims of fate again. But Passion will agree that that sounds like a good idea to have another child since the last one was so healthy. And look at all the territory they're finally exploring. That's fantastic. All right. Yeah, I th well, the thing is, Sophia, we can't really make Navros a playmate because she'll get other nichelings sick if they're near her. And I just really feel like Navros in particular, maybe it's her little tiny black beady eyes, is a very, very sickly nicheling indeed. Um, and Princess Peach, I feel, is almost done wandering the spot and we'll send her back up to this little nook in a second. Meanwhile, down here we have Nectarine, who has just lost her father, so I think that she's a little bit confused about how things are going. And turn ip 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 ip, -ip is following her. But I think Limina No 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 is going to come down and start hanging out with the girls down here. They've kind of claimed this little spot for sure, so they're doing okay. Yeah, we're almost on 70 days. It's been really nice. We've had quite a few adventures. Princess Peach, you were so busy cuddling with all of those bundles. It cracks me up. All right, and then now we're going to have the twins go ahead and we're going to have the twins experiment with visions from the ancestors. Let's get Capypara over here. Let's actually have them do a little bit of fishing first and kind of like get in position for this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Variana, you go over here. We're gonna get your sister sort of in here and ready to go. And we're gonna we're gonna see what kind of vision they might actually have in just a bit. So alright, do we have any babies or anything being born? We're good. Yeah, the tribe really is settling into a bit of a pattern. Alright, well, what's the most dramatic thing I could see? The birth of Passion's next child. So we're gonna be aiming for that for sure. So, all right. First up dramatic step, we're going to allow Variana to have her vision. Down the hatchet. We'll save you next turn, sis, don't worry. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and have poor little Narose. Oh, she's so sickly. Oh my gracious me. Um, we're gonna have her. Oh, I don't want to feed her to an ancestor plant, but I think she's just very, very, very sick. And it's clear that she is not long for this world. So Tala is still super upset about that. Yuzu knew, I think, wants to try to console her and help how he can. So we're going to start working these ones over here. And I feel like Tala might find a lot of comfort in Yuzu Nu's presence. And she might jump over to this side instead. How close are we to Toxic Body? We're, we're about halfway there to Toxic Body. Bok Choi could actually help unlock Toxic Body if his mother Tala was uh, with Yuzu Nu, so they didn't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, let's see. And then Dragon Fruit. <gasps> Baby Drag Onion is grown! So Dragon Fruit is ready to pop on over, guys. 
she is is happy to see yet another successful child out of the nest so we're going to go ahead and we're gonna let garlic mm, he really likes to be the one to gather berries and let dragon fruit do all the flirting so we're gonna go ahead and let that happen uh, all right and garlic goyle i think is gonna just be wandering over here radita oh radita geez uh, well, at least you've got, like, a healing fruit right down there in a second, buddy. I'm gonna let him do some calling just to see what happens. Do we have, like, pokeweed? Pokeweed would be a good mate for him, actually. But, um, oh, an iceberg lettuce is already fully grown. Hmm, B&D immunity. We might have Radita find some love and use charm next time for sure, too. All right, and meanwhile, Tape is down here and i think he wants to teach he wants to teach little buttercup squash how to be a good destroyer of the corruption oh dear and unfortunately elvira has managed to get herself on the wrong side of an ancestor plant so we're gonna need to save her yes yes i think that unfortunately elvira may elreva is she gonna have a vision She's already got everything. <sighs> hmm. But it's the only way around. I'm going to say Elreva unintentionally stepped past the ancestor plant, got yanked in, and Passion immediately leapt to her mate's side. What was that even about? What just happened? <gasps> what is the other ancestor plant eating? That was not part of my plan! Passion! Passion! You were supposed to have, like, a bunch of moves! What happened? Oh my gosh. Um... Some assistance, please? Uh... Who or what is in the other one? I just wanted to clear it out of the way. <gasps> um, <gasps> what is happening? <laughs> I have I've never seen this before. <gasps> um, Nectarine, could you help? What is going on? Living a no, no, no. Everyone's so confused. I know Passion is in this one, so I want to get her out. What is happening? What is happening? Okay, all babies together. We're going to get her nip, 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 nip over here and little pokeweed over here. Um, this is not the plan. Iceberg lettuce? Okay. So what's in this one? This is so cool. I'm just gonna, can I just eternally leave it like that? We're just gonna leave it like that and see if it's just going to stay beautifully glitched and we're gonna call it like uh, the 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 thoughts. Is this, is this just evidence that perhaps Burbberry is, is continually thinking and like, I really think this is so cool. I, I'm kind of thinking, what if Burberry's spirit is still actively like communing? What if you could hear whispers from the ancestors at this plant? Wouldn't that be so cool? What if when you walk up to this plant, because it just eternally is going to be doing this if we don't fix it, I really hope it stays like that. What if that happens and we could say you could hear whispers from the ancestors? That would be so cool! It'd be like the spot you go on the island to hear the ghost of the past. I love it. Oh my gosh. Uh, all right. Speaking of which, though, <laughs> let's jump over here and I think Tepair will be like, What are you two doing? This is not the way to behave around the princess. And we will take care of this ancestor plant. But I am so excited. This is such a cool glitch. <laughs> Uh, that's so cool. Did some poor wanderer wander in there? I don't think so. I don't think there is a wanderer in there. Let's get in close and then next turn we will listen. And if we hear a nicheling call out, we'll know. Yeah, all of these guys are okay. Variana Anna is going to get out of there in a minute. Um, Princess Peach is just kind of like quietly exploring. 
She's really a humble nicheling who likes to snuggle bundles. Yeah, Pokeweed's okay. I think Pokeweed is just kind of like wandering around. Her mom is now fine. This is really cool. Uh, oh, hey, Mandy. Yeah, this is this is kind of fun. Uh, let's listen very carefully, though, to see if there's a nicheling inside. I heard somebody cry and maybe die. I was really hoping it was going to stay glitched. Oh, that's so frustrating. All right, we've got to hurry and destroy this before it, it bites again. Um, stop that. You stop that. Stop it right now. Drop. Drop. <laughs> no initialing. Bad plant. Passion, are you pregnant? You are pregnant. Uh, bad plant. Uh, so I don't- I wish that glitch had stuck around. It didn't, but that was really cool. <laughs> Alright. Well, we don't get the ancestor plant that will just eternally sing to us, unfortunately. Uh, Iceberg Lettuce, as the nanny, if you could please repair this nest. Thank you very much. We're gonna stick passion in it so that she can have the last royal baby of the day in a bit. Um, oh yes, and our twin. Hello? What are you two doing? This is inappropriate behavior around the young princess. Uh, Variana, that wasn't part of the plan. Just so you know. Just so you know. I guess you wanted both of your, your mutations assigned through visions. We're going to have to get you out and then... I will go ahead and assign your mutations. The plants are really up to stuff today. They are really up to stuff indeed. Gracious me. Uh, also, we're gonna bring the little princess over and I do believe that um, Tepe will call out, uh, lettuce, iceberg lettuce lace, do come, do come. There's some grass in my way, and I wish to show the young princess how to gather from this termite mound the corruption. Uh, my gosh. Yeah, that wasn't part of the plan. I love it. I love it, Terry. That's a really good pun. Uh, so iceberg lettuce is going to come over to help out with tidying up this spot because she is a little princess. And Pokeweed's going to go see what the heck her mom is up to. And a little date is gonna come down here because I think that this side of the forest is kind of going to belong to Lemon and Nono's line uh, for now while they like explore it. Gracious me. There we go. Let me go ahead and have a sip of my water, one second. Durian? Bunnel. There we go. Garlic dragon? Delicious berries. There we go. Garlic goyle? You're still a kid. Wander around. Okay, are you guys ready? Um, our children grow greatly, my love. And even as they grow strong in the wonderful ways of my line, they have your wonderful heart and the ability to recite such stunning poetry. Ha! Dragon Fruit has finally figured out how to flirt up a storm with garlic. You just gotta admire the man's poetry. He really likes it. Noted. All right, she's gonna continue to explore. Dragon Onion is going to watch over um, what the proceeds. And then let's see. Uh, let's see. Bok choy. Oh, here we go. <gasps> finally, we have a little bit of progress on this side too. So bok choy, Tala is going to come over because she is just so upset and wandering. And I think bok choy, now a bundle is in his way. I'm gonna have bok choy jump over and Tala just like collide into his arms unintentionally. And I think that Yuzunu is going to immediately tell her that everything is going to be all right. And I think she's gonna be very confused about what he means. Little bok choy is gonna be assigned to gathering the fruit for a minute. Um, I'll have Tala gather this fruit. And then get away from me, Bunnel. That's right, you back off. 
Um, but Yuzunu is going to console Paula because, yes, Izzy Itty Bitty Baby Navros, I don't even think she's going to live long enough to get her to an ancestor plant, but she needs to because we are going to have her be reborn as the first child of Yuzunu and Paula. I really feel this sickly baby in particular is just so immensely weak that she just isn't going to be able to make it. Um, meanwhile, speaking of sickly nichelings, Radita has snagged another healing fruit. He is on the move to stay alive, and I think that next time he is going to be interested in finding some love in order to pass on his lineage. Also, Tepe? Do use caution, Tepe. Uh, we cannot have Tepe destroy this just yet, because that will be quite painful. Uh, but we'll have him clear it away. Alright, so he is getting ready to show that off. We should have one more royal baby from Passion, hopefully this turn or next. And Variana -na 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 definitely wanted to have her second vision. Also, I heard a Barina. All right, get your sister out of there, would ya? Variana, -na 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 -na. that was a little unnecessary on the whole like diving in twice thing. Uh, thankfully, your sister has been able to help you. Hopefully, you guys will be able to get the Razorina. Let me go ahead. Do we have a baby? <gasps> we had a baby! Okay, we're gonna be looking at the baby. That's gonna be the last royal baby of the day. I wonder, whoa! That's why I wasn't getting notifications. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, let's give Varianna -na 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 her visions from the ancestors. So I'm gonna pull up the random mutation thing again. And without further ado, the ancestors have given her the vision of pattern, thin density, and swimming tail. So I think they do want her to actually go on to uh, really search for fish. That's the the like vision that I'm getting. We oh hey look at that they've unlocked webbed hind legs and uh, webbed paw. That's really ironic, just as we were going to talk about that. We do not have swimming tail unlocked, so I'm going to say that the ancestors were saying, you should indeed do the fishing child. It shall help the tribe greatly to gather the Razorina fangs. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and have pattern density very thin. Very pattern density thin. There we go. Excellent. All right, there we are. <laughs> That's going to be really fun. Uh, and let's see. I think we have just, yeah, one birth. So, my friends, we are going to check out the last baby of the day. May I introduce all of you to our next flying baby? We've done it, friends. We have another fruit bat. Almost. Unfortunately, he can't eat any insects. He has recessive savanna horn, recessive scorpion tail, recessive toxic body, recessive bat head, and double bat wing. My voice is disappearing. Help, help, help. What should we name him? He is the child of passion, and he is actually the um, the son of Tepe. And I feel that Tepe would be a little bit perplexed um, to have a son who is another flying bat, or another flying nichling, but he's not a bat nichling. And I think that he is biased to the snoot because it's freaking Tepe, so of course he is. So we don't even have like snoot with a Zuvanzo here. Can we even unlock Snoot? We need to give him wing for sure. Can you even unlock Snoot, bat head? We cannot unlock Snoot, that's right. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Dragonfly would be so cool, but I think we're gonna save that for dragon fruits babies, cause that's awesome. Uh, grapefruit? I kind of like that one. Dragonfly is great. We're going to be saying dragonfly. We're going to be saving dragonfly for dragon fruits children, though, because this is pa this is passion, her sister. To passion? I kind of like to passion. But I think, um, prepare. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yenix Yu, Yu. Well, actually, wait, guys. Oh my gosh. I wish I could save that name. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. I kind of think that this little guy. Um, oh, Terry, we give them wing when they have double wing, even just to denote that they're from the royal line. Uh, I probably don't need to when they're double wing. That was just habit left over from some of our other tribes. Because sometimes we use mutations less strategically and more for story purposes or to denote... Oops, sorry about that. Dropped my hair band. Or my hair clippy. More to denote lineage. Um, You know what? I like Pepper. We're going to go with Pepper for this guy. We're saving Dragonfly for one of Dragonfruit's children. Don't let me forget. And we are going to be saving Prepare. Uh, we're actually going to be saving Prepare for Radita's children. Because we have Radita, right? And I love the idea of naming one of his children Prepare for Prepare for Trouble. Eh? Eh? So that would be really, really cool. Uh, but I like Pepper for this little guy. He's got a little... So we're going to say prepare for Radita's children. So that we can keep going with the Pokemon puns. Because that's going to be awesome. Um, what if uh, what if his job is to chase down Radita? To be honest, Bernadette, that would be kind of cool. But I think that most of the nichelings have kind of forgotten about Radita. And who's stronger, Radita or Pepper? Pepper, actually. Ho -ho. We'll have to see how that turns out. But all right, guys, we do have the tragedy of Narose. She actually may not even live long enough to get to an ancestor plant, but I hope she does so that we can have her be reborn healthy. I'm so excited for when Radita has a child. You guys need to remind me to name his baby Prepare because that is just we, we need Prepare and then maybe for trouble. Maybe we can have Prepare and Trouble the children. That'd be so much fun. Um, to protect the world from devastation. Oh, all right. But all right. Um, I think Tepere might want to have another child, but I honestly think that Tepere only really acknowledges as his descendants the royal snoots. Uh, so I think that Pepper actually falls under his mother's, um, his mother's guidance, and all he can actually do is attack. So I think that he actually is going to be another one of our nichelings who will be a defender line, who carries some bat traits for sure. Ah, oh, Rocket. That would be such a fun name too. We're going to have Ratatata has started an entire line of Pokemon pun names. But all right, guys, it has been two hours. So that's what you guys, uh, you guys know what that means? See, I can't even speak anymore. And I'm starting to lose my voice and Chips and I are going to be going on a walk. Uh, just to let you guys know, Chips has a really big exam coming up that's super duper important. It's been three years in the making for his PhD. A lot of y'all are probably too young to understand like the nuances of getting a PhD. I barely understand it myself. But it means there's a huge test coming up and I really want to be present in uh, like the house for making cookies or just keeping things tidy and less stressful for the next week. Uh, so we're going to skip next week's niche episode, as terribly sad as that sounds. But we have some very, very special like niche compil compilation videos that we're trying to be working on with the patrons. They're really helping me out with that. That I will try to prepare as prepare ho -ho, as a sort of replacement for that. And I'm, I'm going to miss you guys. I just really need to focus on like my life with chips for... Uh, next week because he has like a big test that's three years in the making and is a huge step. It's kind of like a mini graduation. Uh, so that's happening. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm just, he's the one doing all the work. I just want to make sure that I'm present in the house if like cookies need to be made or he wants to go on a walk. You know, when you have something hard to do, even if your friend or like family aren't able to help you with it. It's just nice knowing that they they aren't busy and you can go to them. I want to be that. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, Kovu. Yeah, yeah, you get it then. You get it. But yeah, Nug, I'm hoping to start doing some compilation vids. I'm going to need your guys freaking help on that, but it's going to be really great. Oh, thank you guys so much. I was really worried that I'd get some like naughty knots being being naughty and rude about that. But it means a lot to see that you guys are like, that's cool. Good luck. Um, so yeah, that's that. 
If you guys have, oh, hey, Sophia. If you guys have any questions, I'll take questions for like the next six minutes about anything and everything under the sun that I feel like answering. So I guess that's kind of, <laughs> kind of a catch. And yeah, Callum, you're the one who actually helped me out with the compilation video. You know the one I'm talking about. And in the future, I want to start doing Best Bite compilation videos where hopefully um, I'll make a video talking about it, but you guys can leave hashtag Best Bite in the video comments so that I can search them to help me identify the moments that you find really funny in like the videos for that month or in our stream videos uh, or in some series in particular. So like we might go back and do like a Best Bites for the first season of Warrior Cats, for instance. Or we might do a Best Bites for how the Fruit Bats have been doing when we hit like 10, um, 10 episodes of, or in 10 weeks of doing the Fruit Bat stream. So I'm going to need your guys' help on that, though, because it's just not something I can do on my own. So I'm going to call upon you guys as my pixel biologist to help me out with doing like hashtag best, best bites and timestamps to help me find what you think is funny. Because sometimes I don't realize that that was funny and people are like, that was awesome. And I was like, really? Because I was just being a goose. Uh, but I'll, I'll make a little video talking about it and hopefully it will be something that after a few months we'll just be in the habit of doing. And so you guys will be in the habit of like, that was funny, or that was really cool, or this was a really important moment in the story. And you can do hashtag best bites with the timestamp. And I'll be in the habit of putting together like monthly and series compilation videos based off of your guys' input. And then at the beginning of each best bite video, my hope is to have a little list of the people who helped out at the start. So that's gonna be really fun. And yes, Kalia, Mies is a cookie laying chicken in zoo crafting. And the first time that the niche deities, deities came into zoo crafting was when Pavo threw a, pea, a peacock egg in my yard, a peafowl egg in my yard, and accidentally hatched a male peafowl in my cherry tree. And I could not figure out where it was coming from. So it's like pranked by peafowl or pranked by Pavo or pranked by the trickster god um, from last season. But yeah, it's gonna be really fun, guys. Pinky, 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 pop, pinky, pop wants to know, when will I stream niche next? Probably in two weeks from now, since next week I'm going to just be present in the house for chips. And then, you know, we'll want to celebrate when he's done with his big test. Uh, I actually found Untamed Life as a Cougar 2 violent LPS Mia. I am not ever planning on really playing that again because you attack and eat humans uh, pretty, pretty graphically. And I did not like that. Oh, Derp Nyan Cat, we are continuing Lands of Ice, just we are going to get the Phoenixes first. So Rise of the Phoenix is going, it is kind of like an interlude in Lands of Ice, where I want, I was struggling so much with getting resources, I want to move forward with Lands of Ice challenge by having these Phoenixes with us. So we're going to create a group of Phoenixes, and we're going to then restart the game in sandbox mode so that I have those phoenixes that I can create. And we're gonna recreate them, and then we are gonna send them out in like Lands of Ice number two. So it's gonna be fun. All right. Oh, thank you, Nug. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the compilation videos, but they're 100% something that I would need complete community support to make it happen. Cause I am one duck goose. I do all of it on my own. Um, and I, I like it that way, but it does mean I need help for big things like that. Alexa, are the trees in bloom yet? Nope. I don't have any green on my trees. I actually just made a vlog talking about it on the vlog channel today. So you can pop over to the vlog channel and you can see our forest is just sticks and dead stuff uh, and stuff like that. And Mink, the best way to be noticed anytime is by uh, not asking to be noticed and just contributing happy things. All right, any more questions? I can take like one or two more questions. Oh, and by the way, I, I did talk about it on Instagram, but I'm gonna be resuming our Q&A series in the greenhouse um, with Plant Tycoon, because I really want to. And Lavender Rain, one of our amazing patrons, sent the Me Journal as a gift to me for my birthday this week. And it has a whole bunch of random questions that you can like fill out to talk about yourself. And I actually want to answer those questions in our Q&A series. So we will be bringing back a Q&A series 
called In the Greenhouse, uh, in which I play Plant Tycoon, and people have found it historically to be relaxing and podcasty. So that's going to be coming back. Rachel, I don't know if there's another way. I don't think there's a way for like stream moderators to communicate with each other on YouTube um, directly, unfortunately. I, I wish I had somebody I could send that suggestion to because it sounds amazing. Oh, and Rin! Okay, what was my favorite born for, favorite baby born today? I have to say that Buttercup Blossom is probably my favorite because I think she is the true love of her father's heart. All this time he thought it was going to be romantic love and instead it was the love of a parent for his child. Oh, so beautiful, so beautiful. But all right guys, I'm going to rest my voice because it is quite tired and my beloved Chips has indicated that he would like to go on a walk. So it is time. I will see you guys uh, episode wise later today and stream wise in a couple weeks, uh, if not sooner on Twitch, if I manage to get the more teen and up games going. So uh, if you could have any color, if, if uh, Tegan, it'd be purple. <laughs> But all right, so I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you can find some joy moments. I hope that you had a great time hanging out, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.